Hello everyone, Price Scooter here, and welcome to a new project of Mole Mania. I'm just not looking at it now, and Mole Mania actually was released like towards the end of the Game Boy's life cycle, uh, planned as an actual Game Boy game. But Mole Mania, as itself, is actually more of a puzzly. It's more of a puzzle game than it is an action game, but it does have, but still has the action element as a part of it. It sounds weird that there still be action in a mainly puzzle game, but trust me on this, it, it's there. Now, something I do want to say here is that, let's see. Something I do want to mention here is on the save file screen, so to say, if you have a link cable connected to the game, you actually get access to the versus mode. I'll be able to show you, like, kind of a what the versus mode will look like later on into this game, but just know that there that there was a link cable versus mode part of this game. Anyway, with all that said, let's go ahead and just hop right in to the main, well, we're going to get story time. Exposition, if you will. Oh no! Everybody, get in the hole! Oh. That's kind of abusive. Now I forget this guy's name, and I and I'll probably put it up in post. But this farmer is basically a jerk that just steals moles, and you uh come home to an empty abode. Your wife and kids are mine. If you want them back, come visit me in Jinbi Land. I'll be waiting. Jinbi, how about or the game could just tell me itself. And with that, the, the game kicks off. So welcome to Jinbi Land, where there are... Well, we actually can't go over and see them, but there are seven worlds in total. One for each of the kids that was stolen and the wife. <laughs> as weird as that sounds to say. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, I haven't played this game in a while, so I'm going to be a little lost, slightly blind, and I haven't practiced at all, but I'll fix that in future videos. First off, what the heck does all this mean? Well, in each area there is, in each in each world, so to say, there is a map, a compass of sorts, a full health item, and a skip skip screen or skip puzzle item. There's also cabbages, which are indicated by that cabbage shape and zero that we have to that we collect, and no star thing, which we'll also see at some point soon. Don't worry, more will be explained as we go, but anyway. Hey, Futterball. My seven lackeys of your family. Come and get them if you can. I'll be waiting. Actually, wait, maybe there's eight worlds. I just thought about that. Hop up. I'm here you are. I'm Kangaroo. I'm the first boss. Be ready. Hop up. So you're introduced... So you're introduced to the game's mechanics and everything right from the get-go, but just by facing signs and whatnot. So this game's design is basically pretty simple. B to grab something. And hold B for a throw. I'll have to explain that when they actually throw it. And then A to jump in the ground. When you're in the ground, you can dig yourself a tunnel. And you can press A to resurface. Or you can press B at any spot to look above ground. But you have to be careful where you come up. Because some spots you actually can't come up. Indicated by the thud and the pain above your head. But this will allow you to look above ground while staying underground if you want to stay safe. Underground is not a safe haven, though. Just keep that in mind. You're a mole, they've accounted for the fact you're a mole. Hello. And I've already explained this mechanic. So yes, basically, press A to burrow anywhere. Because if you... Because sometimes, you cannot progress forward without going in the ground. Also, you can't burrow underneath certain things. Ah, uh, there we go. I believe this is our first. So you recover a quarter heart, and that brings me to the, my next point. In the lower right, you see you see beating is our life. Think of it kind of like a Legend of Zelda heart. We won't get more, but we but that basically indicates how many hits we can take while we're here in this one world before our goose is cooked. So we basically have four hits and dead, or three hits, and then the next hit is a dead. Anyway, uh, oh, good, more digging. 
Now we have to... Oh, signs up, signs in the ground. I forgot about this. So, okay, now we're explaining this. So, I think I've already explained most of what they're going to do for tutorial, but just uh, keep in mind. So, anyway. They're basically going to tell, tell you about, you know, there's some places where you actually just plain cannot dig. Also, I will tell you... Hold on, I'm going to go back on to any quick. So, something else a little more astute is that if you've already dug certain spots, you'll move in much faster. Like, here, let me dig out really quick. This also counts for moving in between play in between tiles. So if you don't have a direct path, it will be a slower, it'll be a slower movement. But if you have it, you'll actually move faster than you would above ground. You'll actually dig and come out of the ground faster too. Now let me see. I need to go underneath because I want to make sure. Okay. Now this game actually this game actually has a lot of little secrets. Also, here's the balls. You can press B and hold. You can press B and keep it held while you pull something around. You also walk into it and push it. And if you push it into a hole, it goes back in the hole. Now, I think there's something underground nowhere. But if you have a ball, and you press... Or you pre if you have something and you press and hold B on it, you can grab it. And hold long enough, you get the power to throw it or kick the ball. Press the direction you're already facing to kick it. Press backwards to throw it over your head. And do a back throw of sorts. Dang it, I'm getting caught up. So yeah, you can... Now, we'll need to master that technique of throwing it over our head because if you can go over a single... S there are... You can dig holes. Like, I'll do it right here quick. You can dig a hole, but if you need to get the ball somewhere, you can still fling it over the hole. It's not like the hole is the end-all be-all. This is where the ball lands kind of thing. Oh, and our first enemies. Let me see. I'm going to go underground to check what's under here. Okay, I'm just going to go ahead and dig my way through, because it'll be a lot quicker. But enemies, this is why that whole ball uh, grabbing thing is in. Now, if you're holding a ball and an enemy bumps it, it'll reset your rage, so to say. But 9 times out of 10, it'll also it'll also trap an en a stun an enemy in the corner, the next corner they go to. So use that to your advantage, that you can trap enemies in corners. With this technique. Also... Be prepared to chase down your ball. Because sometimes you will have to. Also. Okay, that was a little too close. Be prepared to be a little fancy with your ball throw. Now I'm going to go underground because... Okay, nope, there's nothing under here. Check under and above ground on every map screen. Because sometimes you won't be able to progress forward. Anyway, these bricks right here. These are going to be the major blockades that we have to break to progress forward. And here's where the puzzle aspect comes in. Oop, I didn't mean to do that. Oops. I meant to read it. So, very simply put, even though I kind of blitzed it at the time, you can either throw the ball at the, you can either throw the ball at it, or you can just push it into it, and it breaks it. Anyway, if this one reads... Have you read all of the signs yet? Well, no, just stand there and get gone. Fine, I'll read them all. Jeez, old man. So you can save and quit from the. Ma so you can save and quit at any time at any screen, but do know that when you save and quit, if you want to read these, by the way, just pause the game. I'm gonna like re skim and scam really quick. But if you want to, you can. If you want to, you can quit. You can save and quit a stage at any point in time. But if you do. If you want, you can quit, you can quit, save and quit at any time. But if you save and quit, what will more than likely happen is that... What will more than likely happen is you'll have be started off from the last safe spot you were at. Now, I don't know if it's from the last cleared room or just the last safe spot, but here. Destroy a blockade, you get rid of all enemies in, in a room, and make it easily, easy, more easier to look for, look for hidden stuff. And once the room is clear, that's it. it. It's clear for good. Ah, yes, and here's Grandpa. Grandpapa. Ow, ow. Get right, you had to walk in everybody. So every time you see Grandpapa, you talk to him, he'll recover your hearts. And then you can continue on your adventure. So now, here's the cabbages. And I think this sign talks about it. You'll get one heart. 
and there are two, 20 cabbages in each level. Sounds simple enough, right? All you have to do, dig yourself a hole, and drop a cabbage inside hole. Now I'm going to try and time this so I get rid of the enemy too. So cabbages can be used to destroy enemies as well as further your own agenda. But if you're going for the 100%, which I'm actually going to try and do, you do want to clear out all cabbages. Just go over there, please. Sometimes getting cabbages is a little tedious, but eh, it works. And all five cabbages will give you one quarter of a heart. Now, we just got the map, I believe. You can only use it to in... So... Now that we have the map, we can go to the menu and click the map and see a base, a very crude outline of the map. And I do mean crude. So this is a 16 block map, pretty short. We might be able to finish things up in this single video, but later maps, they get up to like 20, they get up to like 10 by 10 or something like that. Or maybe not 10 by 10, but something pretty large. Anyway, now this is why now, this is why you also want to be careful of holes, because if the bowling ball, if, I'm going to call it a bowling ball a lot, but if this weight bowling ball thing goes into a hole ever, it'll respawn back at the, uh, respawn back at that smaller hole up there. No matter which hole you throw it down, and you won't be able to like, catch it underground or anything, so. Let's see. So, I'm going to dig a hole from a cabbage. Oh! Right, the radar! Uh, how do we get to that? I forget. Ah, dang it. Ah. Let me look up. Okay, let's go through this whole area. So, come on out. Oops, don't grab that. Also, I do want to point out that, even though it looks like it, the stuff around the outside isn't an ornate design, like, corner thing. The stuff around the outside is actually water. So, when you see water on two sides, you know, you basically know that you're at the corner of the map, as indicated by this. Let me get back out. Anyway. Now, again. As I said before, always check... Well, he's going to teach about the backdrop that goes over holes. But it also flings it beyond a hole. So, be wary of that. But, also, we get this. Which I think is the radar. Uh, radar which I forget what this does. I think this is the locator. Yep, it's, it's effectively the compass from uh, Legend of Zelda. Which is, basically... Hey, press start now and go to the map. And now you can see where the bonus level is and where the boss is. Bonus is indicated by the star shape. Bonus is just, or boss is just B. Somebody fell asleep at the design department. But I suppose when you're given like six pixels to work inside, you can't do too much. Ah, here we go. Now one of our first, I think like proper challenges. Now you can do, you can do this kind of level any way you feel. What I'm going to probably do is well I'll, hold on yeah there we go that's our oh we just get that life I think we don't even have to store it I was thinking wrong anyway so here's your first proper level and like I said you can either destroy all enemies or let the blo brocade bro blockade breaking do it for you and when you destroy a blockade, the cabbages do, do stay in the field, so... But if you have... But if you have gotten rid of all cabbages keep before you destroy the blockade, uh, they do not respawn when you reset the room. Oh, there that's what it is. It's a potion that does it. Ah, crap, right? I have to actually walk... So basically, it's a health refill item. Now, I'm going to go ahead and just spring up here, because... I, oh, I thought I screwed that up. Never mind. Kind of want to keep yourself a little limited when it comes to... When it comes to cabbages. Or, my cabbages, so to say. What, I'm not allowed to appreciate... Not allowed to appreciate a last amateur joke? Screw you. Anyway, push it in. And go back onto the puzzle itself. Now... With this puzzle, we basically... Well, with this puzzle, this very early starting puzzle, we want to go down and to the left and round up. So, what we'll have to do is do not dig a hole here, but you'll have to use proper timing to and press A to jump out of the hole. 
Go! Dang it. I thought you press A and B at the same time and get out of the hole. Ah, dang it. Okay, maybe I was wrong. Well, don't worry. We'll get that health back. Here. You know what? Here's what I'm going to do to make my, make my life just a little bit easier. Le boop. There. Now we can do it. Now we can do it however we wish. And I'm going to wait for this guy to come back. So the game... The game is... Like I said, it's more of a puzzle aspect. It's a little bit... I'm going to need to... I'm going to need to try that again. But yeah. It is more of a puzzle aspect kind of game. In that you have to wait a lot for things to line up just right. But once you do, so satisfying. Okay, we're safe to come out. Anyway, walk it back. Oop. Try again. Yoshi, you're demonically possessed. Stop trying to kill me. Oh, and I forgot to do something. <laughs> I am very bad. Let's see. Ah, there we go. There's the quit out option. Now we have to go in the upper right. Now, like I mentioned, you do want to keep track of certain things in levels. Uh, let's see. How do I... I gotta think about this, because... Uh, no, we can just come back around, I think, maybe. Well, this is a... Well, that's the bonus room. But we can't get into it. Usually they're designed like this where you have to go from the inside out. But what we can do... Is... Nothing. Damn. <laughs> so we do have to come from the other room. But there's your bonus room, and it'll be fun once we get to that. Now... Oh, or I could just push it, because the room resets when you leave. Adoy. Uh, let's see. Oh! Well, that was a mistake, and a and a half... Everybody go away. Like I said before, pretty simple way to reset everything. But now that we have this taken care of, we can get... We can get a, um... I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna dig a hole here, because we got to get up there anyway, so... Dig a hole, throw it backwards. And up here is our cheap out move. So yeah, you can use it at any point in the level to pass through an area, and basically a, this puzzle's too hard, I can't figure it out, I'm done. But when, but if you do use it, that's it, you surrender, you basically surrender your victory for this, for this. And I'll talk more about that in a little bit after we do some other stuff. Actually, let me look at the map, because I think we're at a point, yeah, we got a couple rooms left plus the bonus. I think we'll go ahead and actually end it all here. End it all here for today. So everybody, thank you for watching the first episode of Let's Play Mole Mania. And join me next time when we'll do the bonus of World 1 and complete World 1. I'll see you folks then.